so it's been a while since i did a video and uh, part of that reason or rather part of the reason why is i've just been kind of spending time thinking about the content i'm making kind of planning some stuff out actually reading a lot and um, that's actually what i want to talk to you guys about is that if you asked me this question 6 months ago i'd say i didn't read as much but in the last 6 months i figured a way to make reading a part of my day to day process right um almost part of my system and and that's what i really want to talk to you guys about i want to talk to you guys about how i read and how i make sure it's a consistent and secondly how i make sure i get maximum value out of reading let me start off with the first point the first point is most people get stuck on something that's very random which is that do i read a physical book right um something like this or do i read off a kindle something like this and 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 that's actually a, an interesting place to start because we get stuck in how we actually hold something in our own hands start off and and that's what i struggled with for a while i was always like okay i maybe i need a kindle maybe i need to have a physical book but may, maybe uh, how will i read a physical book at night if i have to you know read in the bedroom where everybody else is asleep these are kind of random questions which might seem basic but those are what trouble us the most and make us stop from starting so i'd say first start with what you have available to you and over time if you have the option keep both uh, around i actually read off both my kindle as well as physical books and over time you might realize they both have their place in your day to day um as an example i read on my kindle through the day but in my night time I read off a physical book and and there's a specific reason for that. The specific reason is that if you read off a screen just before you go to sleep your your eyes do get a certain amount of fatigue and and the, that light no matter what everybody might say about you know no this light doesn't give you glare and all that stuff reading off something physical uh before you go to bed just makes you sleep better. It doesn't give you screen fatigue. So physical books before I go to bed and a kindle during the day so it gives me the convenience to walk around with a kindle through the day even though it's locked on the house and to have that lack of glare um at night and and actually this whole like day and night separation is what brings me to point number 2 routine you have to build reading into your day you got to pick a spot in your day uh, think about when you could read for me over time it used to be something i would do in the evenings but i realized that you know there's too many distractions that kind of come up so now i read just before i go to bed i give myself one hour every night just before i go to bed when i am going to read i'm not watching youtube i'm hopefully not scrolling instagram or even listen to a podcast i am reading a physical book and and you know if you give yourself that saying okay i'm just going to spend an hour or i'm going to spend half an hour doing this every day you might just maybe just sometimes just read a page and move on to something else but it becomes a practice where you might even just spend 5 minutes but you are making sure you do it every day and that's actually one of the best things to do so it's kind of build it into your routine um you know you could do it while eating your lunch right not look at a screen while eating your lunch maybe read off a book so pick a few moments in your day and say okay i can give 15 minutes i can give 20 minutes i can give half an hour or, or an hour to this and, and build that into your routine point number 3 and now we're moving from reading to highlighting and remembering you know everyone tells you to highlight on your books right so you can use a highlighter or a pen if you have a kindle you can highlight on the kindle um, but at most times you do that as a practice but you never really go back to it uh, let me start on both ends let me first start with a physical book you know you you highlight at many points but then you forget about it sometimes you might be the kind who will just like kind of put that small fold at the corner of the page but do you really go back to it i discovered something um, it's an age old system but it really works is that When I read a book like like this one I read recently, I had these smaller bookmarks. Um, you can just buy these off Amazon. They're great because they come out. Some of these things sticking out like this uh, make me think about okay, maybe this is a point I want to revisit again. Maybe this is a point that I want to relook at again, and and that really kind of helps me think about some of those points and reinstill them in my head. But now, what if you're read, reading off a Kindle? Um, one app that I use, which has literally become my daily driver, is an app called Readwise. So, Readwise is a great app to have because what it does is you can sync it to your Kindle. It takes all your highlights across all the books you've read, and it throws ten at you or twenty at you, depending on depending on how much you choose, 
and you can run through them every day. So every day I, I go through my readwise and, and I look at 10 highlights from books I've read. Now comes the interesting part. This can also, which is actually my next point, this is also a way for you to find out which books you want to read next because readwise has, a, has an interesting ability, a function. And that ability is for you to say, okay, can I also see supplemental book highlights? You can, you, you can actually set that in the setting. So once you set supplemental book highlights, what it lets you do is it shows you books similar to what you're reading or similar to the kind of book highlights you are looking at right now. So from time to time, amongst those 10, for instance, it might throw two supplementals at you. And you might look at a supplemental and say, okay, that's interesting. So you might download a sample or you might try to find an extract online, uh, excerpt online, and you can actually use that to decide on the next set of books you read. I mean, it's a, it's a great tool, right? It's A, helping you revise, but also helping you discover newer books. And if I had to kind of go beyond this, you know, people talk about audiobooks. Um, I've always found that audiobooks by themselves aren't necessarily the most fun. Uh, although recent ones like Malcolm Gladwell's Bomber Mafia is great because you know, suddenly there's this a cinematic vibe to it, right? there's sound design, there is not just someone reading it out to you. Um, but um, actually my, my co-founder Rohit actually gave me an interesting suggestion. He told me that if you read a book physically while listening to the audiobook, you tend to read faster. Now I've tried that a few times, I've enjoyed it, but I don't do it all the time because it also makes me go at a certain pace. I don't necessarily want to go at a constant pace, so, but it might work for some people. Um, I, I've seen that Sometimes for some books, this worked really well for me, uh, but not for all books. And the last part, the last part which you need to do if you want to read right, yeah, if you want to read right, is basically for you to turn around and say, I have highlighted these books. So I need to keep going back to those highlights. I want to go back and revisit some books. So you don't have to reread most books, but you do want to revisit certain portions of it just for you to revise and remember. A great tool for you to remember is to write down the actual passages that you really like sometimes. So your brain in many ways, if you write something down, um, it kind of remembers it. If you say it out loud, it remembers it. Your brain is that. It's almost like you're feeding it information by writing or saying it and it, and it keeps it at the back of your head. Or in some cases, you might enjoy a book so much, you should just reread it. You don't have to find a new book every time. You can actually go back to an older book. Like um, I have about five to six books, which I have read at least twice, if not thrice. And, and I go back to them from time to time, maybe not read the entire book, maybe read a chapter. So, so give yourself the opportunity to reread. You don't have to be in this race to consume newer books most times. Rereading is amazing because you always find something more, some insight that is deeper than what you got last time. So these are the ways in which I read and, and this is how I made it a system in my life. I've given it, uh, made it a part of my routine. I have given it a time in my day. I have a system of, of highlighting and revising and going back to them. And, and in some way, by doing all of these things and doing it just before I go to sleep, I get to mull over these books as I'm going to sleep and, and kind of um, letting my subconscious kind of take them in. Yeah, so that's what I had for you guys today. Let me know in the comments how you guys read. Um, are there tricks and tips that you would have? I'd love to hear them. I'd love to understand from you if there are some books you've read which you've reread many times. So any of those, drop them in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. I'm going to do a lot more stuff around books, I've realized. I, I seem to be sharing a lot of stuff around this, so around content books which I consume, some of my own methods. And uh, yeah, till then, Till the next video, whenever that is, take care and cheers.